But first of all, I want to uh, present uh, some positions of our Ukrainian colleagues who could not come. You know that now the border between Ukraine and Russia is nearly closed, and some of them uh, simply sent uh, their video, but it was impossible to make very quickly English subtitles for presentation in New York, and I will just present some ideas of these people. I start from a person who is uh, much more similar with uh, mainstream Western leaders than we are. This is Igor Panyuta. He is uh, one of the leading persons in Socialist Party of Ukraine. And uh, this party supported uh, elections of uh, new president of Ukraine. They said it's better than nothing. And general position of Socialist Party is that uh, now we have a struggle between two imperialists superpowers. One is big superpower, United States of America and their satellites on one hand, another small superpower is uh, Russia and uh, all conflicts are just a problem of um, inter-imperialistic uh, contradictions between these two superpowers. Uh, also, Igor Panyuta said uh, that there is no left ideas among uh, defenders of uh, Donbass and Lugansk and all eastern regions of Ukraine. And there really is not too much criticized uh, position of modern Ukrainian government or Puta. You can uh, find the words which you prefer. And this is more or less well known position uh, among, uh, let's say, social democrats. Another person, Professor Tikharovich. Uh, I will try to show now with my simple computer his name, his face uh, on big computer big screen. I will ask my friends, maybe it will be possible to see. Just put this. <laughs> so if you can see, this is Pikharovich. And uh, I will present some ideas of his paper. So now I'm coming back with my laptop. And uh, we'll continue. One minute, please. Yeah. So, Professor Tikharovich uh, stressed that uh, he uh, wants to give a real analysis, and he's professor of philosophy in Ukraine in Kiev. And uh, his position is interconnected with analysis of history and modern situation of uh, Ukrainian contradictions. Uh, he is also a very important uh, specialist in the of dialectic, and his analysis is really historical, dialectical, based on the contradictions. So, first of all, uh, this crisis is a, a real crisis based on uh, deep social economic contradictions. Firstly, Maidan started uh, from the protest against corruption and the union of uh, top bureaucracy Yanukovych, president of Ukraine in that time from one hand and oligarchs from another side and their unity was really tragedy for Ukraine and people were very angry about this uh, domination, domination of both bureaucracy and, uh, and oligarchs. But then uh, Yanukovych and his family or so-called family started to move the power and the money in their pockets and big part of oligarchs started to fight against not to fight, started to oppose to this policy of Yanukovych. And finally they decided to support a real protest from below and support Maidan. And finally to Maidan came a lot of different people, partly really enthusiastic about necessity to change the system of uh, economic and social power, partly paid by oligarchs, partly people who came from the West, especially of Ukraine, with nationalistic and sometimes even passive focus. Also, uh, Professor Pikharovich stressed that in Ukraine, in the center and west of Ukraine, only 2% maximum of population supports uh, Bendera, right-wing uh, politicians, pro-Bendera, professes politicians. Really, I can stress now, I don't agree with his position, but I now just translate position of Pikharovich is not my position. Finally, he said that uh, we received, uh, after February 21st, something like a conflict uh, between uh, Russia and United States on the territory of the Ukraine. And he said that from the mid of February, uh, Ukrainian leaders uh, became puppets in the hands of the United States bosses. 
And I think this is very important, this of Fikarovich, and we must remember about this. And finally, he says that the uh, United States government uh, made all this plan in order to inspire basis for maybe even new world war, war between Russia and Germany, and this is one of the goals of United States government and United States bosses. So this is a few synthesis of long paper of Professor Pekarovich, and if you have interest in the websites of Alternative, you can find this information. Uh, finally, I want also to stress uh, a few words from Jan Vilchuk. He is really a painter, but he is a fantastic person, communist, who is spending now more than one month permanently on the uh, Skype, uh, Internet, and the radio connection with uh, people who are fighting in the east of Ukraine, who are on the barricades, who are under the fire. And uh, he made a fantastic job, and we have now chronic of all these events. So, this uh, person, Jan Lelchuk, stressed that um, so-called uh, government of Ukraine, uh, which is recognized by Europe, is really a puppet in the hands of the United States. And the behavior of this new Ukrainian government, I'm reading text, uh, translating his text, uh, this Ukrainian government uh, is trying to do in Ukraine now the same as Qaddafi, uh, from his point of view, made before. And if, for uh, the case of Qaddafi, uh, United States and Europe uh, fight against him. Now they support uh, Ukrainian uh, puppets and Ukrainian um, uh, attacks on uh, part of their people, part of Ukrainian people. Also, he says that uh, it's a real civil war and the uh, Ukrainian army, especially uh, special uh, formations of right sector, uh, these nationalist forces, uh, they are killing a lot of ordinary citizens, uh, women, older, elderly people. And that uh, killing of uh, this uh, civil uh, population, uh, citizens of towns, uh, villages and cities, is a real crime. And this is main characteristic of the model of behavior of modern government uh, of Ukraine. Also, he stressed that according to this chronic, uh, the biggest part of ordinary soldiers of Ukrainian army has no intentions to uh, have uh, military conflict with uh, uh, citizens of Donetsk, Lugansk and other cities and towns. They do not want to shoot, but Ukrainian government forced them to do this. And when they oppose to this uh, oppression, uh, pressure of Ukrainian government, they can be killed or arrested. And this is practice when Ukrainian troops uh, are killed by another Ukrainian troops or right sector representatives uh, because they do not want, uh, did not want to attack uh, citizens in the east of Ukraine. Also, he says that uh, Ukrainian government now uses very heavy weapons. I don't know how to translate it. It's uh, 152 millimeters artillery. Maybe it's uh, good enough for understanding. This is really a really huge uh, artillery which is used only in when big army attack, uh, I don't know, special region prepared for defense. But this artillery is used against the ordinary towns and citizens. Uh, and uh, a lot of other examples, I do not have now all this, um, I, I do not have now opportunity to present all these ideas. So, my personal ideas I will present a little later. Uh, during uh, our session, and now I want to move uh, my computer and to give floor to Pavel Zotov. He came from the he came from the east of Ukraine, from Kharkov. Uh, he is one of the leaders of Baradba, left independent organization, maybe the most active left independent organization in Ukraine. And he will tell you a few words during our limits, maybe during ten minutes. Okay, Pavel, you have now to tell a few words to our friends. My warmest greetings to all the comrades abroad, to those who are interested about our situation. Uh, to say shortly, the left socialist union Baripa uh, have fought against the right-wing uh, nationalism and neo-Nazis long before the uh, events in uh, Kiev and in Ukraine, so-called Maidan, have occurred. And uh, while it uh, started to happen, 
we also presented our point because it was started all about it was all about uh, slogans of uh, joining the European Union, which uh, Yanukovych government, the previous government of Ukraine, uh, didn't want to do. Uh, it's, it's first, they wanted very much. They promoted that idea for years. We will join European Union Economic Association, etc., etc. And then suddenly they stopped. Next day, this uh, what is called Maidan has started. After later, it became oh, violent, and uh, it uh, went through several phases. But it is quite a long story. About if you will want, we can one day uh, present the development development of this Maidan, etc. But uh, what it ended, we basically uh, can evaluate now, and uh, we understand the situation from the side also. It ended with the victory of uh, one oligarchic circle upon another oligarchic circle. Let's speak uh, oligarchs, which were and Tai Yanukovych could win over those oligarchs who supported Yanukovych. And what we have now? We have in Ukraine the rule of uh, plain oligarchs, which are the biggest capitalists of the country, biggest uh, holders of uh, property, money, uh, connections, uh, everything, which, is, uh, which can be called, uh, so to say, uh, uh, strong part of uh, capitalism, whatever. So strongest capitalists I just want to show you the audience. I so think it's everybody here you know <laughs> So, my word is good. So, after the, all of this happened, what, what, they, what did they use to win? They used the groups and um, it was um, not actually very, very big in number. They were not very big in number, but they had enough of militant groups that call themselves neo-Nazis openly. First, it was uh, uh, organizations called uh, Patriots of Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukrainian National Army, but it, it was only the name of the organization. Doesn't, uh, doesn't, this name doesn't reflect that it has some connection with the actual army of Ukraine. And also, uh, there was an organization called the White Hammer. Those were, from long ago, absolutely, openly, neo-Nazist groups. They had uh, Hitlerism, racism in their ideology. Not only this, but more, uh, there is much more to tell about this. Also, they had a basis uh, which we may say like it was a social group of supporters for those neo-Nazis, it was quite a wide circle of uh, football fans called ultras. That, that ultras football fans, which, were, uh, uh, which had such a tradition of aggression against, uh, first of all, against minorities, especially uh, those from South, let's speak, they always like to beat somebody from uh, Asian uh, uh, immigrants, uh, like this. And, um, uh, by, by organizing and by the uh, power of money to, to organize those uh, militants and uh, aggressive groups of neo-Nazis, uh, the oligarchic circles of Ukraine could win on the streets of Kiev. They pressed it and pressed it and pressed it on that government, which was actually also quite a criminal government itself. But who, what, what, what came against uh, this territorial government? It's absolutely criminal. It's just that they have no uh, possible uh, attention to any of basic democratic and uh, human uh, values. Policy. To speak about this, we have million facts for right now behind us. The constant prohibitions for any of peaceful meetings, for instance, for opposition. We can call 
our self opposition because actually now it is even more than opposition because it is now uh, close to uh, civil war and uh, there is uh, 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 so the elements of civil war present. Prohibition of uh, peaceful meetings, prohibition of freedom of speech. You just try to go to, uh, to streets of Kiev and some others, even Dnipropetrovsk, which is center of the country. You just try to go there and speak about, uh, let's say, socialism or something against uh, the ultra-nationalism. Next moment, uh, their patrol will catch you. And there are videos about this. Thousands of those videos. Thousands of people, they beat, they beat for uh, only expressing the opposition, uh, uh, so to say, uh, opinion. And, uh, prohibitions of the uh, peaceful meetings, prohibitions of uh, uh, freedom of speech, and etc. This, those are absolutely anti-democratic even, anti-basic democratic, uh, whatever, bourgeois rule. It is not even uh, democratic bourgeois government, as we can see, let's speak, uh, uh, I don't know, in, uh, in Europe. It is absolutely against democracy, what they do, and it is also against humanity, because, ah, this is another point, they always lie. <laughs> this is, the, uh, this is uh, the point. Whatever you hear from Ukrainian official, or not even official, but from Ukrainian oligarchic media, because all the media in Ukraine belong to some of one of another oligarchic group. The most uh, powerful of them is what is called Privat Group, led by uh, uh, the, the biggest sponsor of this coup, uh, uh, named Kolomoysky. Privat Group, Privat Bank, those are uh, oligarchic uh, uh, group which was in the sharpest uh, conflict with the Yanukovych oligarchic group. But those uh, people hold the media. Whatever they say is lie and lie and lie. Uh, for instance, take the uh, Odessa fire, which uh, was an event, then they burned people inside of a uh, building in Odessa. Yes, those people were combating with them. But they didn't try to seize, uh, so to say, surround this uh, building and hold uh, somebody there like this. They start to burn it. Uh, the Ukrainian official media say those people have burned it themselves. By uh, somehow, it doesn't matter. They, they just burned it themselves. All of these uh, 270 people who died in the fire, you know this. Uh, the Socialist Union combated this sharply from the very beginning. First, we use every democratic method to do it. Meetings, uh, uh, rallies, speeches uh, in whatever possible uh, places, uh, in the internet, etc. We issue it also almost every day our communique. Um, but at the, at the next the stage of this, it, it lasted from the very beginning, from 21st of February, we, we, we claimed that we start the uh, sharp anti-fascist, anti anti-Nazi uh, uh, movement, uh, and we uh, uh, have these activities in many, many cities of Ukraine, and even now, in the, in the uh, conditions of underground, really, because we had to no underground. We had the losses, we had our people arrested. Actually, one of our greater uh, comrades, uh, so to say, the, the person which I uh, personally uh, very close to is uh, Denis Levin. Uh, he is a Jew in uh, his uh, uh, city. Uh, he was attacked by those Nazis, not only as a communist, but also as a Jew. And he was attacked and tried to uh, they tried to catch him several times. Now he is hiding underground. He cannot even uh, make a call. But we know about where he is safe and well. But this is the condition we have now. We are underground. 
in the in those places which are uh, what, what we can say occupied by the Nazi militants. And uh, the, uh, the remember one thing first and very important: this uh, Nazi coup serves to the only Ukrainian oligarchic circles which paid for much. And yes, they could really had some support by ordinary people because they hold all the media and now they promote absolute dictatorship by, by, by uh, absolute dictatorship of their Nazi circles in the Ukraine. Ukraine becomes a, a Nazi and fascist state uh, in, the, in Europe in the 21st century. And uh, communists fight against this. And Union Boreba now proclaims we, we turn to be a fighting communist party. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's really very important. And I want to say that uh, our speaker came from the region where he could be killed any minute. So it's not only uh, abstract uh, words. So this is practice. This is the reality of the struggle and life under the threat to be killed, arrested, beaten, and so on. So I'm very glad that he is here alive because a lot of his comrades uh, are wounded, uh, arrested, and uh, simply cannot uh, talk uh, openly with you and with anybody. And now I want to give floor to Ludmila Bulak. She is a researcher of culture in the Institute of Culture in Moscow, but she is also very active in contact with Donetsk people, and he will present you not only her personal opinion, but also opinion of uh, leaders of uh, Donbass uh, uh, defense, uh, real militants, real officers and soldiers who are fighting. And she had interview as a representative of alternative journal with them, and I'll work now as interpreter. Mila, you're welcome. First of all, I'm very, very glad to participate in uh, this very important uh, forum. Um, I uh, see uh, my many friends of America. Um, so, Ludmila will continue in Russian. Я сейчас назову, транслирую основные принципы, ответы, которые дал один из руководителей Донецкой Народной Республики в интервью нашему товарищу Яну Ильичу. Это второй курс so, uh, Ludmila will now uh, give some uh, examples of uh, opinion of uh, leaders of Donbass region. And this is from interview which was made by alternatives with Jan Lilchuk, Ludmila and leaders in uh, Donetsk. Первый вопрос был, поддержат ли граждане Донецкой Народной Республики самих антифашистов? Или это все-таки пассивная масса? Здесь говорят, что uh, в Донецкой Республике бандиты которые бьются с право с фашистами, но население не поддерживает. So first question which we ask: if really ordinary people, uh, citizens, support these uh, militants who are fighting against fascists, or they are just uh, passive and only a few uh, soldiers, a few officers are in this battle, involved in this battle? Is it so or not? Поддержка гражданского населения. Uh, есть, более того, она все время растет и растет. And uh, Ludmila and Jan received a lot of evidence that there is direct uh, civil support, support of civil society, ordinary people from below, and this support is growing from day to day. Раньше приходили, еще в марте, в апреле, приходили на митинги, просто слушали. Сегодня люди идут на блокпосты, на баррикады, чтобы помочь реальным делом. Uh, if in March or in April uh, people were simply coming to the uh, rallies, demonstrations, meetings to listen maybe to support or not support, but it was passive support. Now people are coming to the barricades, to the places where they can be killed, and they are bringing food, they are helping to with uh, medicine uh, assistance, uh, and uh, they are simply supporting by their words people and sometimes even stop uh, aggression of uh, opposers from killing. Они приносят покрышки, грузят мешки с песком, приносят еду, 
шахтеры после тяжелой э, смены идут сразу и идут на баррикады на блокпосты. Идут туда женщины, которые готовят еду, которые приносят медицинские средства и даже помогают подростки детей. Uh, men, but also women coming, but uh, miners, first of all, workers from miners uh, enterprises, they are coming after hard work to help to organize barricades, to build barricades, and they are working in other hours, uh, and this is very sunny and very hot weather now, uh, without any money, by the way, no money at all, this is pure voluntary activity. Uh, women are coming uh, to help uh, with uh, drugs, with uh, food, Uh, with just good words, uh, to tell a few words, uh, that's medicine, of course. Uh, just tell a good words. Uh, even uh, young boys and girls, teenagers are coming, but uh, everybody is trying to prevent the appearance on the barricades, of course. If before this, the position was expressed by workers, then now the position is expressed by workers. If before the position was expressed by workers, now the position of uh, person must be expressed by real activity. Сегодня второй момент. Основ... Все идет на основе энтузиазма и борьба и поддержка антифашистов. Very important. All this struggle, uh, both of militants who are on the barricades and those who are coming to help to this anti-fascist war, uh, all this activity is voluntary activity based on the enthusiasm, no money. И это делается на основе самоуправления. Например, создан добровольный медицинский отряд в Донецкой Народной Республике, где бывшие, где врачи, в частности, и руководитель этого добровольческого медицинского отряда, который делал диссертацию, все забросил, сейчас занимается медицинской помощью. So, and uh, the model of organization of this activity is uh, self-organization from below, with elements of self-management, but in very simple, but uh, uh, working forms. People are coming together, uh, different people, uh, including, for example, very good professional doctors and leader of the uh, uh, voluntary medical uh, group, if I can say so. This is a big group of uh, militants uh, for doctors, uh, nurses and so on, they organize themselves without any initiative from above, without any money, and they came to help to people, uh, citizens, uh, soldiers, uh, dependents. And uh, the leader is a good scholar, and he stopped all his uh, scholar activity, his work. He uh, doesn't have money now because he left the job, and uh, they are working for nothing, just uh, to help people. Следующий вопрос. Кто вам помогает? Где вы берете средства? Ответ. Евгения, вот руководитель этого антитеррористического анти э, отряда, ответ был таков. Это добровольные пожертвования частных лиц из Израиля, из Германии, от американских лиц, товарищи. Uh, so, uh, it was a uh, very important question, uh, what are the source of the money which you have, because of course they have some money. And Evgeny, uh, this is direct quotation, he is leader of the anti-terrorist group, a uh, group of uh, militants who are fighting against terrorist actions inside uh, east of Ukraine, and there is big threat and there are a lot of such actions in the east of Ukraine. And uh, he said, we do not have any support of oligarchs or big business. We have money only from ordinary people, and this is small money which are coming from different uh, regions and countries. Israel and United States, Europe, uh, I can add Russia, uh, Ludmilla didn't mention, but he said about Russia too, uh, from different regions of Ukraine. Uh, this is small money. And when our group alternative, this is from me, this is not quotation from uh, Evgeny, uh, when alternative sent money, it was small money, it was uh, 20, 50, 100 dollars from different personalities, it was not oligarch money. Следующий вопрос. Отношение к собственности. Олигархи испугались, что Донецкая Народная Республика провозгласила конфискацию олигархической собственности. And the question is also, what is your relation to the property? And uh, in the Donetsk Republic, uh, um, there is initiative to expropriate uh, uh, property of oligarchs, which is not used for production. And this is anti-oligarch uh, in intention. Uh, ответ uh, Донецкой Народной Республики такой. 
Мы не трогаем личную собственность, машины, квартиры, огороды, ни в коем случае. Личную собственность нет. Но та собственность, которая была, за, которая была появилась в результате криминальных операций, эта собственность должна принадлежать обществу. И прежде всего самым слабым из них, детям, инвалидам, пенсионерам, ветеранам войны. So on this, uh, Evgeny said in his interview that we will never uh, take uh, anything from uh, uh, personal property, uh, cars, apartments, uh, houses, gardens, land uh, of ordinary people. But uh, when we are speaking about property of oligarchs, criminals who are fighting against us, who supported the uh, uh, killing of our people, uh, we will use this property for the support of uh, kids, uh, for the support of uh, elder people, for social needs. Следующий вопрос. На каких принципах вы собираетесь строить систему управления своей Донецкой Республики? The next question. Uh, what are the principles uh, which we will use for the creation of new state in Donetsk region in the east of Ukraine? Ответ очень был четкий. На основе открытой, открытой демократии, открытости информации, финансовой открытости, демократия – это главные принципы нашей народной республики. And uh, he said, by the way, this is leader of a military group, group of uh, military people. And he said, we want to use principles of democracy, and the most important is transparency. Transparency of all financial uh, floatings of all money floating, uh, transparency of decision making. Uh, and we will talk with ordinary people and uh, make uh, our steps uh, together with them. Open democracy. This is direct uh, translation from Russia. Деятельность всех чиновников должна быть открытой. И если она не будет отвечать из интереса общества, то эти чиновники будут меняться с такой же частотой, с какой они появлялись. And uh, also his idea was that we want to have transparency of uh, activity of bureaucrats. And they must be changed if they do not want to follow to the interests of people. And uh, we will change them. And we already changed some of them uh, if they did not follow to our interests. Вопрос следующий. Какие у вас социальные программы? Вот на какие социальные программы ориентирована Донецкая Народная Республика? Ответ следующий. Uh, do you have uh, any social programs, uh, social uh, goals uh, in Donetsk Republic? Do you discuss this question? It was another question of alternatives. Для нас прежде всего это интересы общества. Это уменьшение пенсионного возраста. Это субсидии, сохранение всех субсидий инвалидам, ветеранам войны, детям в детских домах. So they said that we want to support uh, social uh, needs of ordinary people. Uh, they... The urgent task is to support um, uh, houses where, uh, I don't know, hotels where people, uh, kids are living, kids without parents are living. Then uh, support elder people and we will not increase uh, pension ages, we will decrease uh, uh, age when person can have uh, pension. I'm sorry I'm a little bit nervous because of the important topic. Uh, and other uh, goals, uh, social goals. На Украине сейчас по всей Украине растут тарифы на коммунальные услуги. Позиция Донецкой Республики. Мы сохраняем старые тарифы и ни в коем случае не будем увеличивать, будем даже уменьшать. The same with tariffs for gas, electricity, housing and so on. Ukraine, uh, center, west of Ukraine, has very rapid growth of these tariffs. Uh, and hundreds uh, percent and uh, the Netsk region people said that we will use uh, all possible and impossible measures not to have this increase of tariffs. Следующий, да, и обязательно самая большая проблема это сохранение заработной платы не только для тех, кто работает, но и для тех, кто воюет, чтобы семьи не страдали. Но это самая большая проблема для Донецкой Республики сегодня. And the main problem, he said, that people, especially men who came to the barricades to protect citizens who are now fighting with uh, armament in their hands, they do not have wage because uh, the Donetsk region had the same capitalism as all other Ukraine in the past. And they are um, trying now to implement special law to pay just wage which people had before if they are defending the Donetsk Republic as uh, soldiers, as officers. Нет, сказали они. 
советскую историю повторить нельзя. Но взять получше, что у них было, мы должны не только у Советского Союза, но и все, все мировые практики. Do you want to build new Soviet Union, USSR second? And if any said no, we understand that it's impossible to build again uh, uh, Soviet Union and it had a lot of uh, negative features, but we want to use positive experience of Soviet Union and we will do this if uh, we will be alive. Так и по, вот был э, главный тоже вопрос, который завершал это интервью. Какие главные причины противостояния? Почему бы стали воевать э, с э, бандеровцами? So, uh, and the final question was, uh, what are the reasons of the conflict? Why are you fighting? Why you decided to use, uh, to take uh, guns in your hands uh, to oppose these uh, pro-fascist uh, attacks? Их ответ был. Это война, вот все, что происходит сегодня на Украине, на Юго-Востоке, это не национальный конфликт, не межнациональный, это социальный конфликт. And, uh, it was said that uh, this conflict is not conflict between two nations or people with different languages. This is not uh, inter-nation, uh, conflict between nations. This is conflict uh, based on the social and political uh, contradictions. У фашизма, потому что у фашизма нет национальности. Фашизм есть фашизм. And he said that this is struggle against fascism, and fascism doesn't have nationality. This is struggle against killing of people, I can add. Поэтому мы все в Донецке в действительности являемся антифашистами. And uh, from this point of view, we are dependents of our uh, country, and we are anti-fascists. А конкретные причины первые сказали э, представители Донецкой Республики. Деньги, которые зарабатывают регионы, идут не в регионы, а идут в центр Киевской хунты, где, uh, которые тратятся без контроля общества. And this income was transferred to the center, to the junta, to bureaucrats, to oligarchs in Kyiv, uh, not for the people of Ukraine, not for the people of the east of Ukraine. And this is important economic reason for conflict. Второе. Газ на Украине принадлежит всему украинскому народу, народу, народу Украины. Но сегодня это частная собственность олигархов, и мы вынуждены платить за это высокие цены. Не только на Юго-Востоке, но и на Западе Украины. And also there is a problem of the price for the gas, uh, which is an uh, important part of uh, expenditures of ordinary people. And uh, very big prices on the gas are interconnected with policy of Ukrainian oligarchs and with their attempts to appropriate uh, gas rent, if I can say so. Третий момент. Бандеровцы считают, что труд – это удел рабов. И человек труда, те же шахтеры, должны сидеть в шахтах а, и отдавать свой труд националистической элите. Uh, then the people who are taking us, uh, and by the way, some of them as Bandera, this Ukrainian faces as the hero, uh, they do not respect uh, working, working people, the labor. Uh, they think that this is just for primitive people, and for us this is opposite. We are working people, and we want to respect labor. И вот четвертая причина. В этой войне, в этом антифашистской войне мы не уничтожаем, не сжигаем даже пленных, мы их кормим, пытаемся вернуть матерям, работаем с родителями, в отличие от бандеровцев, которые уничтожают, сжигают людей. And uh, the first reason, uh, we are not aggressive, uh, but we must protect ourselves. And uh, examples, even when uh, we have uh, former soldiers of the Ukrainian army arrested, we never kill them. We give them food, we give them uh, medicine assistance, and uh, mainly we liberate them after that. We have a lot of uh, mothers and fathers of the soldiers who are coming to us, and asked to liberate their sons, and of course we do this. Uh, and from my point of view, I can add that we have a, a lot of videos uh, which shows that this is a real thing. This is not only their words. И последняя причина евроинтеграция уничтожает культуры региональные, культуры татар, украинцев, русских, евреев. 
эти культуры должны быть сохранены. And finally, By the way, uh, I had uh, I participated also in this interview, and I can add that this uh, Evgeny said my favorite songs are Ukrainian songs, and uh, in, in our uh, in our group there are a lot of Ukrainians and even people from the west of Ukraine. This is not only Russian people, all Russian uh, language speaking people, not Russian nationality. In this scene, I already gave you a very short three main contradictions. And three main contradictions uh, which are typical for the Donetsk Republic because this is also very contradictory of course uh, uh, situation. Donetsk Republic is fighting against uh, pro-fascist uh, tendencies, attacks, groups. And uh, my Men and women are dying because of that. Но лозунги этого этой борьбы пока имеют национальную державу, национальную национальное выражение, славянское единство, хотя там воюют и украинцы в руководстве Донецкой Республики украинцы, русские, евреи, башкиры. But slogans and ideas of leaders of Donetsk Republic are very often. Interconnected with Russian nationalism or Russian statism, there is such word in Russian, Dirjava, power, big power. And uh, this is one of the contradictions. Uh, and uh, this uh, Russian laws are uh, existing in spite of the fact that uh, among uh, defenders are uh, people of different nationalities. <laughs> С одной стороны, Держав... Донецкая Народная Республика пытается строить демократическую модель открытости тайно ориентированной системы, но лозунги пока сохраняются державные. Second contradiction. In reality, the organization of Donetsk Republic is democratic and with many features of grassroots democracy, but the formal slogans and model are interconnected with uh, statist rhetoric uh, and uh, respect to the strong hand power. Иногда поступки в истории, иногда поступки людей отстают от их идей. Здесь мы видим наоборот. Сознание людей отстает не не поспевает за их поступками. Поступки опережают их взгляды. There are a lot of examples in the history when uh, the activity is uh, behind the words, uh, beautiful words and not beautiful old-style activity. In Donetsk Republic, situation is opposite. This is new uh, progressive actions, activity, and old, uh, sometimes regressive, uh, uh, archaic uh, slogans uh, and uh, mentality. Необходим между той борьбой, войной, антифашистской борьбой, которую ведет народ Донецкой Народной Республики, и ориентация на будущее новыми альтернативными программами, на которые ради которых And also there is contradiction between tactic goals and necessities to fight against this attacks just to defend, to prevent mass killing. And uh, from another hand, there are some interesting intentions, strategic intentions of new alternatives of the future. И последнее совсем этическое критерием этической правды Донецкой Народной Республики, как наподобие Парижской коммуны, наподобие испанцев, которые воевали в гражданской войне в Испании, является то что сегодня мир поднялись левы всех стран мира. Вот это один из главных критериев этической правды. Если бы здесь шел только передел собственности, мы бы с вами сейчас не проводили бы этот круглый стол. Но он есть. Это доказательство их правоты. Против борьбы, против национального либерализма. Uh, so, the people said that uh, this is not, uh, of course, uh, simply uh, 
contradiction between different imperialistic uh, intentions. Uh, this is a much more complex uh, struggle for new forms of social life, in some aspects similar with Paris Commune or civil war against fascism in Spain, where also participated very different forces. And uh, here we have something like a struggle against uh, uh, national liberalism, national liberalism, I don't know how to translate it, it's uh, parallel with national socialism, uh, the name of the fascists uh, in Germany during Hitler period. And uh, the international solidarity, uh, anti-NATO actions in uh, many towns and cities of Europe and uh, different countries of the world, this is example of, um, not example, this is a proof that uh, struggle in Donbass is not simply a struggle of for pro-Russian forces against pro-US forces. И только сейчас, закончив свое выступление, я поняла свою большую ошибку, которую я сделала. Меня Евгений просил передать от имени э, Донецкой Народной Республики пламенный привет солидарности с э, форумом левых сил Америки. And uh, finally, Людмила wants to translate uh, words of Евгений, uh, with whom he had talked just before this uh, Skype um, uh, air, and uh, Евгений asked to transfer greetings and expression of solidarity, of international solidarity with participants of the left forum. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. You want to say something? No, just a very, who is the Afghani? What is his position? Who is the was the person who was quoted, who was interviewed? Uh, it was interviewed, the person could not tell the family name. Uh, he said just that he is Evgeny, and he is uh, one of the leaders of the anti-terrorist uh, organization. Uh, they are protecting people from terrorist actions inside uh, east of Ukraine, Donetsk and other regions. So, we'll continue now with your talk, and then we'll have about a half hour for questions, and what we're going to do is have people come up here. I'll call on you, and you can form a line, and you can each ask questions, and then you'll respond. Okay, continue, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Carsten. Now a few minutes for my presentation also. So I want to summarize some ideas which we can conclude from our presentations which you heard and uh, from the many our discussions with people uh, from the east of Ukraine, from the center of Ukraine, with different uh, specialists in Moscow. We had uh, many seminars, uh, rallies, uh, discussions. And of course, situation is not simple at all. Uh, first of all, I want to stress that uh, modern uh, Ukrainian uh, authorities uh, are not really democratic, and you had a lot of uh, opportunities to understand this. Of course, it was elections, but a uh, big part of Ukraine didn't participate in these elections, <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of uh, evidences of falsifications of elections of the president. Uh, plus, it was uh, really impossible to express a any form of um, real opposition to uh, opinion, to ideas of modern Ukrainian uh, leaders. Uh, all people who wanted to say something against them uh, could be beaten and arrested, and some candidates to be uh, president were arrested and beaten uh, in Ukraine. And the uh, conflict and tragedy in Odessa you know, was uh, one of the expressions of such a uh, real threat. So, first, I think this is anti-democratic power. Second, their economic and social uh, intentions are uh, right-wing uh, liberal intentions. Uh, the fact that the uh, oligarch is leader of Ukraine now is the only one of such examples. But uh, also, there are a lot of other facts. The governments uh, for Ukrainian uh, eastern uh, regions of Ukraine from Kiev were also oligarchs, and uh, they could not took power in the east of Ukraine, but they attempted to do this, and the candidates were pure oligarchs, uh, owners of billions of dollars. Uh, the more important, uh, economic policy, which is realizing now in um, Ukraine, in the uh, center and west of Ukraine, uh, is very similar with policy of shock therapy or shock without therapy in Russia and in Ukraine in the early 90s, in 1990s. And now International Monetary Fund is also uh, 
giving uh, different um, loans, uh, but the basis for these loans is uh, realization of the policy of short term. Uh, so, uh, really, Ukrainian uh, government now, Kiev government, uh, realized very aggressive and uh, based on the open force, uh, non-legitimate force uh, policy. Uh, attacks in the East is only one part of this, but uh, a lot of people who are beaten uh, and killed in uh, the center of Ukraine, in Odessa, in uh, the west of Ukraine, uh, by Nazis, by right-wing forces. This is also part of this uh, policy. Uh, what is also important is the um, fact that uh, modern Ukrainian uh, Kiev government uh, is in the hands of the United States and sponsored by the United States and partly by the European Union and uh, partly by uh, NATO, better to say countries, uh, members of NATO. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is important to stress that prehistory of this government was not so simple. As I said in the introduction, uh, people who came to Maidan uh, half, an hour, half an year ago uh, had the democratic intentions, anti-oligarch intentions. And part of them, by the way, now again came to Maidan. See, today, I don't know if you got this information, thousands of people came to Maidan to say, we do not want to have oligarchs as our leaders. This is new event, by the way, went in the center of Kiev, not only in the east. If we move to the east, as Ludmila said, uh, it's a really contradictory situation. Of course, uh, uprising in the east of Ukraine has not, is not uh, pure uh, democratic uh, socialist or at least social revolution of ordinary people. It's not 100% uh, the same as Paris Commune or something like this. Of course, behind we have Russia, and Russia is a small imperialistic uh, country, uh, not superpower, not empire, but periphery, small empire, maybe something like that. And uh, all our leaders and oligarchs are not angels at all. They are the same persons as the Ukrainian oligarchs. All this is true, and this is one part of contradiction. But there is another part of contradictions. This is the real intention of people to defend themselves, to defend their homes, to defend their values, to defend their lives, to defend their language. And this is a real uprising from Bilbo. So we have deep contradiction inside this uh, struggle in the east of Ukraine. Contradiction between, uh, from one hand, uh, um, statist, sometimes even nationalist, pro-Russian intentions, and uh, of course uh, influence of uh, Russia with all negative features of Russian capitalism. But from another side, real uh, struggle of the people against those who want to kill them, occupy them. And among ordinary Russians, there is fantastic support of Ukrainian struggle. We never had this uh, type of enthusiasm of millions of people, uh, nearly 90% of population now will say, we support these people. I have my friends, uh, 60 years old professors, who are seriously asking me how they can go to the east of Ukraine and to take gun in the hands and to protect people. And this is not history, this is a history, this is not nationalistic history. This is an attempt to create new type of life. And uh, if we can have now Ukraine, unified Ukraine, we, where uh, all people in the east, in the center, in the south, in the west, uh, will be together, and this country will be outside of any box. We will not be satellite of Russia, we will not be satellite of NATO real independent democratic country where everybody can use language which they want. Russian language, Ukrainian language, Tatar language, doesn't matter. If such intention will be now in Ukraine, I am 100% sure that absolute majority of Russians will support this intention. And majority of Donetsk Republic will support this intention. They are fighting not uh, against Ukrainians. They are fighting against nationalist, uh, semi repressive forces, pro-oligarch forces. Of course, the struggle is also partly based on the interest of the oligarchs from the East, and this is also true. As I said, this is not pure socialist revolution, pure uprising of other people. But there are elements of such a price. There are elements of real enthusiasm, voluntary work and voluntary struggles, and real heroism of ordinary people. That's why it is important to take into the consideration.
and a few words about Russian nationalism, statism, and so on. Evgeny, with whom we had interview, uh, said directly that uh, he is a supporter of Russian Empire. This is true. I don't want to make any idealization of these people and uh, of him personally. But from another point of view, he said, uh, as I uh, mentioned, we want to have Ukraine for Ukrainians, Russians for everybody. We want to have two languages in our region, Ukrainian and uh, Russian language. We want to have open, open, open uh, transparent uh, government. Uh, we want to have uh, big social programs for ordinary people. We do not want to have authoritarian leaders. This is one of the paradoxes. Support of Russian Empire is absolutely against authoritarian modern, model of political organization in the Netsk Republic. And this is the reality. And we do not want to make idealization. And final remark, uh, for us it's very important to have international solidarity with progressive tendencies in the east of Ukraine, in the center, in the west of Ukraine. A uh, real struggle against uh, military actions, against uh, mass killing of the people. And uh, if we can have such support of a peaceful solution, if we can have this pressure on government in the United States, pressure on government in Ukraine, in all countries, in Russia, to stop a war, this can be extremely important for all of us. But now, uh, if you will ask uh, whom I support, of course, a big part of uh, left people in Russia will say, both are worse. Russian uh, imperialism is bad, United States imperialism is bad, everybody is bad, and we are for world revolution. Don't. I don't want to repeat this. Uh, I'm a supporter of socialist uh, future, I'm a supporter of democracy, but in modern situation, I think these are all contradictions. Eastern people, people in the east of Ukraine, has more uh, basis, has more uh, necessity to support them than uh, Kiev Hunter, Kiev government. This is my opinion. Thank you. made the call and says that he cannot participate in the interview today because uh, he is under the attack, he is under the fire. Exactly. It was the direct radio that he is shooting and cannot participate in the scientific conference. And that is who? You can be the first question. As a tech support person. As a tech support person, Sasha, uh, first we say. Hi, uh, let me interrupt with you. Uh, my first, actually, the first question. How do you manage to speak for an, one hour and never mention Crimea? <laughs> Okay. And you don't need even to answer this question, take several questions together. I was in the USSR, I was in Russia for 10 years in the 90s, fighting against counter-revolution, and including amongst the miners in Donetsk. What happened, the horror of Odessa, is just one example out of millions that have been the result of capitalist counter-revolution. It was the destruction of the Soviet Union and the return of private property that has been the motor force for the horrors we see. I was in Donetsk in 1993 when the coal miners showed their power as the working class and they shook Ukraine. Our message to them was that they needed to strip the face, the lie of democracy from the Yeltsin-Bush counter-revolution that had taken power on the barricades. The International Communist League, International Communist League, the fourth International League of Spartacus, ours was the very first published protest against Yeltsin. We called upon the Soviet working class to sweep away those elements who became, the, who come to power as the oligarchy. Can I ask that you come to close because there are other comrades who are very precise. Thank you. Excuse me. Today, our program is for socialist revolution to sweep out all the oligarch regimes. But we take the stand of defending the right of Crimean Russia to be part of the Russian Federation and for the right of the people of the Nets Republic in the southeast Ukraine to determine their own fate. That is an essential part of our program. Okay, I'm really going to At the same time, I want to let you know.
There are many people in this country who, despite the extremely biased pro-government uh, media that uh, portray fascists uh, as Democrats, that there is a fairly wide awareness that uh, terrible things are being happening in Ukraine and that the United States government in particular is sponsoring fascist uh, pogroms and fasc fascist terror. Uh, I just wanted to show we have we talk about the fascist nationalist regime there and about the fascist pogrom in Kiev, which the, the media here tries to portray as if it was a fight between two groups when it was actually mass murder. My question is obviously to us in any case it is necessary to defend the right of the people of Crimea to, to uh, determine their fate, to join with Russia, and also for the people of Odessa and the south and east of Ukraine to determine their fate. There are people who are fighting for that, as you said, people who support a Russian empire who are Russian nationalists. My question is, in fighting against the, the Ukrainian nationalists, ethnic nationalists, and fascists, is, how is it possible to fight also against the dangers of the Russian nationalism and uh, is it possible or it must, it must be possible to fight in the course of this to fight for an actual socialist revolution of an internationalist support against all the oligarchs in East and West as well as in Russia? Thank you. So I'm going to turn it back to you, Sasha, uh, your comments. Okay, so now our comments, and uh, let's start from Lyudmila, and then uh, we will move to our friend from Ukraine. By the way, I just want to say, for people who may have come in late, this is Skype from Moscow, although there are people from Ukraine and Russia. My question is, Быть в составе России, не быть в составе России. Если бы сегодня Татарстан в России, Башкирия в России, захот... люди Башкирии и Татарстана захотели поделиться с Россией, я считаю, мы обязаны считаться с более изъявлением людей. И нравится нам это или не нравится. So, the Nola says that, uh, as far as Crimea is concerned, uh, it's import important to understand that uh, main reason to be or not to be inside the country is the opinion of citizens of this region. And if in Russia, for example, uh, part of uh, Russian state, Bashkiria, 
or Tatarstan or another part of Russian state will decide to become independent state, uh, Ludmila will say, yes, you can be independent state and this is your view and no problem with that. And if you will, okay, this is the answer. Uh, uh, now about Crimea, everybody about Crimea. Dear friends and comrades, if you speak about Crimea, now uh, what is the question? Why, uh, why it was, what, uh, for what reason it was uh, with Crimea so it could quickly say goodbye to Ukraine? Ukraine and Crimea has uh, almost the same relation to each other as, for instance, United States and Cuba. <laughs> if uh, Cubans, uh, for instance, will say once they don't want to be part of the United States, and if the United States is weak enough, most likely Cubans will go away. Now, Cubans are there, Crimea is here. Crimeans never wanted to be in Ukraine, surely. Once Ukraine has become weak because of events that happened there, and it was not absolutely Crimeans, uh, so to say, uh, participation in all of this. There happened a mili uh, militant coup. Armored uh, forces could uh, move out the head of the state. Next day, Crimeans jumped and said, maybe this is the moment. And they used it to this moment completely. If in the, for instance, in this moment, there was uh, strong enough Turkey or Bulgaria or Romania, so if they could join, they could join to this, uh, another state uh, to protect them from possible Ukrainian counter-attack, they could join Turkey or, or Bulgaria or Romania. But it was near to them, the quite strong uh, Russian Federation, which uh, has uh, the same language and which had uh, their sympathy for a long time from, from ever, actually. Uh, because of it, they decided quickly jump and join the Russian Federation. That's all. Uh, consider this. Ukraine relates uh, to Crimea same as uh, USA relates to Cuba. That's all. Thank you very much, Pavel. And I also tell a few words. Of course, this is not so simple question, uh, mainly because the Russia has uh, also double standards and Russian government, not Russia, but Russian government. And uh, when Russian government uh, discussed the question of Crimea, they said, of course, uh, people of Crimea must decide themselves. But after that, it was special law in Russia that uh, no region of Russia uh, can be separated from Russia. And if you will talk in favor of separation of any region of Russia, you, are, uh, you can be arrested as a criminal. So, by the way, what we are talking now is now criminal uh, behavior, <laughs> according to us and new legislation. Uh, so, this is, of course, double standard. Uh, the same for United States, the same for European Union and so on. When independence uh, is uh, uh, profitable for them, they are in favor of independence. When uh, it's not uh, profitable, they are against. My opinion is the same as the opinion of Krudmila. People of any region can say yes or no to be part of one country or another country or to be independent from one or another country. With Crimea there is one problem. Of course, uh, it's uh, not very positive to be part of a uh, Russian capitalist system and I'm not sure that the future of Crimea will be as beautiful as uh, some people in this region are dreaming now. Uh, they are dreaming mainly about restoration of Soviet Union and Soviet spirit because, for example, in Sevastopol, uh, I don't know, maybe majority of population are still has that main values, values of Soviet Union. It's a very contradictory situation. In reality, they will have Russian oligarchs, and this is, of course, not very positive. But if uh, Crimea will not be part of, will, uh, uh, if Crimea did not decide to be part of Russia, I'm afraid that uh, next week or next day they can have the same uh, 
hundreds or thousands of people killed by uh, Ukrainians, uh, by Kiev army and right sector, as it is now in uh, the east of Ukraine. And the journey to Russia uh, was the only opportunity not to have war in Crimea. So this is an important aspect, and it's necessary to take this aspect into the account. As far as other questions is concerned, very short comment, and maybe my friend also will give these comments. Yes, I think that a uh, big part of these conflicts uh, are a result of the uh, disintegration of the Soviet Union in the form which uh, took place uh, 22 years ago. It was brutal and uh, unjust form of disintegration. And by the way, I wasn't, I am a supporter of self-identification, self-development um, uh, of uh, states uh, of former Soviet Union, and uh, it was evident, and I was talking about this when Soviet Union existed. But uh, form of this uh, separation was brutal, uh, it was form of uh, brutal capitalism which uh, created uh, negative results for majority of the states, uh, majority of the population of former Soviet Union. Uh, so this is true, and the integration of Soviet Union provoked all these wars, and in our territory we had during the last uh, 20 years uh, many wars, and we had many thousands of people killed because of this. So, uh, as far as Odessa is concerned, it's a real tragedy inspired by nationalists and semi-fascists uh, supported by uh, Ukrainian, well, not Ukrainian, but really, Kiev government. And it's a real tragedy. And finally, about two nationalism, Russian nationalism and Ukrainian nationalism. If we are speaking about the uh, general landscape, of course Russia is bigger than Ukraine, and uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, uh, situation uh, very um, difficult, uh, and I am uh, against Russian nationalism. I was against Russian nationalism, and I am against Russian nationalism. But inside Ukraine, uh, Russian-speaking people are uh, minority, and this is struggle of minority against uh, absolute domination of majority. Uh, for many people in the east of Ukraine, by the way, in Crimea, in the past. Uh, Russian language was normal or native language, and to speak uh, Ukrainian for them is the same like to say to all these audience, you must speak Spanish. If you cannot speak Spanish, nobody will have opportunity to be professor in university, nobody will have opportunity to participate in state apparatus, nothing. If you are people, you must speak Spanish. If you are not Spanish-speaking people, you are not people at all. Will you agree with this? I am not sure. That's why the uh, paradox is that Russian nationalism inside Ukraine became part of the struggle for democracy. This is a very negative situation, but this is reality. And uh, in this case, I was again, and I am against uh, Russian nationalism, but uh, I am in favor of uh, two languages and rights of all people, Ukrainians and Russian, uh, Ukrainian-speaking people, Russian-speaking people, Tatar-speaking people in Ukraine to have their schools, their universities, and the opportunity to be in the parliament. And maybe now, Pavel, your words about this. Uh, uh, one more comment and then your questions more, okay? Uh, and working with and to speak about the uh, Ukrainian situation now as a, uh, so to say, consequence of uh, what happened with the Soviet Union, yes, partly it is, but uh, mostly it is a consequence of uh, the world uh, crisis of 2007-2008, uh, this world crisis uh, gave the uh, birth to uh, different uh, uh, to, uh, to economical uh, of, uh, decline of Ukraine uh, from that time. It was actually even before the uh, cadencia or uh, this period of uh, rule of President Yanukovych. It happened then uh, uh, even uh, before. It was uh, from 2007 then. Uh, Ukrainian President Yushchenko was in power, and then after this Yanukovych came, but crisis grew and grew, and uh, oligarch circles uh, had uh, 
markets uh, shrinking, markets could become less and less. And that's why they start to uh, fight each other. They, uh, they, they have to push somebody from the market. Uh, and in this fight, in this uh, plain capitalist, uh, what is called, uh, competition, uh, they uh, came to the extreme points, then they had to uh, fight with each other by force. There, are, uh, there is a children's game, then the, the children stay around one chair and some music play it. Once music ends, uh, somebody has to take chair. <laughs> Who put the take this chair is out of the game. And this, is, this was like this, somebody had to take chair Somebody had to take this piece of market uh, which uh, was, uh, uh, so to say, uh, becoming smaller and smaller for uh, Ukrainian economy. Uh, the, this is the, uh, the plain consequence uh, is the world crisis. Uh, but uh, uh, for for Soviet Union, Soviet Union uh, had ended long ago already, and the time was uh, very short. So. Uh, uh, Yes, it is to a degree. It is a consequence of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, dissolvement of Soviet Union. And also a question about uh, Russian, nation about Russian, Russian nationalism. nationalism. Russian nationalism, uh, you may uh, almost uh, hardly feel. Uh, you can, uh, to, to find Russian nationalism, you have to go and serve her. It is in some very small groups which claim themselves Russian monarchists. But, uh, uh, but uh, those groups are quite small, although they could promote uh, in this wave of uh, resistance against the Kievan uh, uh, neo-Nazis, there, there is a wave of resistance. In this way, it is actually quite chaotic. The, more or less organized groups like us, like uh, communists, or on the opposite hand, uh, some monarchists, could promote their, uh, for instance, uh, political views better, as better as well they are organized. Because the, the masses are not organized. Until even now, there is little of organization, there is more of Chaos in all of what is going on. Thank you very much. And a few words of Miller, and then uh, your questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Fascism, uh, fascism, Ukraine is not a big ni fascism, ni Russian fascism, ni какие либо другим. Победа Советского Союза в Великой Отечественной войне была потому, что победил не русский народ. Ни татары, ни русские, ни белорусы, ни украинцы, а победили народы Советского Союза. Вот только в этой международной солидарности можно победить фашизм. Но фашизм... Uh, I just asked to give me opportunity to translate. So, Lutila said uh, that uh, only uh, together, on the basis of internationalism, we can fight against uh, nationalism, uh, including Russian nationalism or Ukrainian nationalism. And one of the examples is struggle during uh, Great Patriotic War, World War II, uh, of all people of different nations in uh, our country, uh, in former Soviet Union and uh, other countries against places. All together we could win on it. Today, fascism in Ukraine, Banderists, have raised a lot of Россию, Украине, Башкирии, там, я не знаю, Японии, Америке, всем народам мира. Поэтому, если мы не дадим ответ вот этому поднимающемуся фашизму, то он начнет свое наступление, которое уже затаилось, этот фашизм, и в Европе, и в России, и в Литве, и в других странах мира. Uh, Ukrainian fascism and nationalism is part of the internet uh, world uh, tendency, and now we must fight against Ukrainian fascism, uh, Bandera nationalism, and so on, uh, because this is part of the world very negative wave of the growth of right-wing nationalism and semi-fascist groups. 
And if we will not stop uh, fascist tendencies in Ukraine now, it will be growth of fascist or pro-fascist Nazi uh, tendencies in all over the world, including Europe and other countries. Thank you. And Thank you we are much. sorry for long to answer. This is very important for us question. So we wait your question. <laughs> co-coordinator of a major anti-war coalition, the United National Anti-War Coalition, that has organized demonstrations in 30 cities around the country against U.S. and U.E. and NATO involvement in Ukraine and support very much the activity that you've talked about in eastern Ukraine and were against the right-wing coup. My main question was one that was just asked. It was about the steel workers. So let me just ask instead. What do you see as the end game? You say it's not um, a Paris commune, but where is it going? And what can it lead to, the rebellion um, in the eastern part of Ukraine? Thank you. Well, I can just tell you. My name is Bob Garson. All I meant to ask is already asked. We all hope for the same kind of uh, a thing, but what do you honestly think will be the outcome of this? <laughs> Hello, Sierra. <laughs> Greetings from Christina. Uh, do you think that after the U.S. fiasco in Afghanistan and Iraq, the U.S. imperialism is changing from the direct military invasion to national coup d'etats. For example, we have seen this happening from Honduras to Egypt to Ukraine. Thank you. Uh, Jason Wright for the International Bolshevik Tendency. Uh, we, of course, favor the self-determination of um, uh, Crimeans and uh, their choice of whether to be independent or to affiliate with Russia, and we don't think that uh, Crimea should be bound by uh, something Khrushchev uh, did on one drunken night. Uh, but also, I want to ask uh, if there's any kind of like a formation of defense guards um, within uh, the, the Ukraine that consists of, say, Russia phones and Ukrainian speakers and uh, uh, tatters that can uh, resist both the fascist uh, thugs of the right sector, but also guard against uh, any manifestations of great Russian uh, nationalism. And, uh, and also that uh, the movement, uh, I want to ask what sort of diversity is within it, uh, and freedom of criticism, for instance, to criticize the, the, the homophobia and bonapartism of the Putin regime. Uh, of course, we're all opposed to U.S. and EU imperialism, I hope. And uh, against the uh, right wing coup government in Ukraine. Yes. Yes. Um, 
Hi, my name is uh, David Hungerford. I'm with Freedom Road Socialist Organization slash Fight Back. Uh, I asked a question earlier about the danger of expanded U.S. direct military event, um, involvement. Of course, there are Blackwater mercenaries in there already. How great is the danger that that would uh, occur? And let me ask the question I asked before, which was, uh, what is happening to the uh, democratic progressive forces that were in some of the initial occupation of Maidan at this point? Okay, we're turning it back to you, Sasha. Okay, thank you very much, Carlton. Uh, okay, who will start? Pavel, maybe you will command some questions. Ну, вопросы были, какое будущее Украины было вовлечены и рабочие. If you speak about the future of this ongoing uh, conflict in Ukraine, which is on one hand uh, uh, oligarchic uh, conflict, uh, different oligarchic groups, but I think we have already passed this phase by. It, this phase has ended. If there was, even for some uh, short period of time, a view, so to say, a picture of uh, uh, some of oligarchs supporting the, uh, uh, the opposition movement of uh, Southeast, now, you know, they don't. Absolutely. There is no oligarch inside of Ukraine and outside also, that's for sure. Who supports the uh, forces of uh, opposition or, uh, let's speak, uh, fighting forces in the liberated areas uh, of uh, southeast of Ukraine. Because even the biggest oligarch of, uh, of the East, and uh, he was uh, the strongest and biggest in all of Ukraine, his name is Ahmedov, he is uh, acting absolutely against the eastern, uh, southeastern uh, opposition in everything. And as an answer to it, southeastern opposition have general uh, intention, and uh, it uh, was expressed many times that we want all of this oligarchic property to be confiscated towards the uh, People's Republic. Uh, uh, needs forever. No oligarchs anymore, absolutely. And it is intention of millions now, of masses. That's first. Second, in the phase, in this present phase of the conflict, we have uh, liberated areas which are more or less controlled by the forces which oppose in the Kievan government, and they have, we have Kievan government forces. Now, there is almost chaotic situation from, uh, from both sides, inside of, the, um, inside of those groups which uh, present both sides. But this is for long, we are almost sure. It will not end quick, and what is important also to understand, it, will, it may be uh, possible to have all uh, three ends of it. First end is victory of uh, Kievan government, which will uh, bring uh, this regime to the rest of the Ukraine. Second is the victory of uh, uh, anti-Kievan uh, forces, which are uh, mostly uh, anti-fascist, in uh, coalition with socialists and in coalition with the uh, uh, communists, of course, such a coalition which uh, can be anti against the Kiva government. This is the second uh, uh, solution. And the third solution is to have some demarcation line like it is in Cyprus, when uh, no force can uh, beat another force. Most likely, this can be also for some time. But uh, uh, in any case, one force have to beat another, or 
there will be a demarcation line somewhere in between the country. That's all. Now, the Mila and Chagall just said. Сегодня в Донецкой Республике создаются органы общественного контроля. Это люди, шахтеры, и не только шахтеры, это люди, учителя, люди из социальной сферы пытаются организоваться, чтобы создавать органы вот этого общественного контроля. Now in the east of Ukraine there are some new intentions and people from the below workers from minus factories and not only are creating organs of people's control and they're trying to control the situation in the region and the economy. Но без международной поддержки, широкой, активной поддержки, они будут уничтожены вместе с Донецкой Народной Республикой. And, uh, support and international intentions, international intentions. Without such support, uh, they will not have future. В Ельцинский период, когда была криминальная приватизация заводов, я объездила 40 заводов, где рабочие выступили за демократический контроль над этими фабриками и заводами. Но их раздавили. It was an interesting similar period in Russia in the end of 90s and beginning of 2000s when in 40 enterprises of Russia there were occupation strikes and Ludmila went to all these enterprises from Vibor to Vladivostok to help uh, people be all together, they're trying to help people to organize a new form of collective work. But without real solidarity, these intentions, uh, unfortunately, were defeated. So that's why now we need this international solidarity. Not, not we, but uh, the Netflix Republic as well. И рабочие мне тогда говорили, весь мир западный говорит о значении демократии, но никто не вступился, поддерживая нас. Вот цена словам о демократии. And the workers of these factories in Russia told uh, that uh, in the West there are a lot of people who are speaking about democracy. But when we are fighting for real democracy in our enterprises, nobody wanted to support us. By the way, from my point of view, I want to add uh, from me that it was support from small left groups, but not from, of course, uh, formal, formally democratic mainstream forces. Вот почему сегодня очень важно поддержать Донецкую Народную Республику в их борьбе с фашизмом, потому что это борьба не только с фашизмом, это борьба за новые социальные альтернативы. And that's why it's important to support progressive tendencies in the struggle of Donetsk Republic. Uh, progressive tendencies, tendencies of the struggle for social goals, anti-fascist goals, and this will be, uh, such support from uh, international community will be very important. Украинский фашизм нельзя победить русским фашизмом. Это одно, одна и та же сила. Украинский фашизм не может быть победен русским фашизмом. Это только два форма той же негативной Вот почему победа в СССР, Советского Союза Великой Отечественной войны, войны, это была победа всех народов СССР. И uh, remind that victory in Second World War in the Great uh, Patriotic War was victory of all the people again who were from different nationalities who were fighting against fascism. Эта интернациональная победа не случайно символом Донецкой Народной Республики является Георгиевская ленточка называется. Эта ленточка у нас дома хранится. На ней медаль моего отца, который воевал в Кенисберге против фашизма. И когда он войну закончил 17 лет, воюя два года до этого. And uh, in this case it's very symbolic that uh, symbol of Donetsk struggle is special uh, 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 orange black uh, sign, uh, which was symbol of the heroes, uh, special uh, sign of the heroes in the war against fascism, Second World War against fascism. And this international war against fascism became symbol uh, of uh, uh, Donetsk Republic, and this uh, type of uh, sign had the father of Ludmila, who was a soldier fighting fascism uh, in uh, 1945 when he was only 17 years old. И последнее. Сегодня принципиально важно, чтобы граждане Америки и левые, прежде всего Америки, создали антивоенные какие-то группы, демонстрации, чтобы люди и в Украине и в России знали о поддержке граждан Америки и видели, что политика Обамы и позиция левых 
И позиция граждан Америки – это не одно и то же, как это было во время войны в Чечне. Когда мы выступали с критикой войны в Чечне, войны в Чечне которую вел Гельсин, чтобы видели, что есть граждане России, которые против политики Гельсина, и есть политика Гельсина. Либерализм всегда заканчивается по жизни. And this is only opportunity for us to victory and to stop the war and escalation of the war in modern situation. Kasten, uh, I have only a few minutes to comment questions, so I will be very brief. And uh, first of all, about the question of Marion Mogdoni. Uh, I also do not see very positive solutions of Ukrainian contradictions in the frameworks of uh, oligarch type of capital which had Ukraine and which had Russia. So we are together here and we are trying to help as much as we can to the uh, progressive tendencies. In this case, uh, the question of Carson about uh, progressive forces of Maidan, uh, which took place, uh, which had um, their struggle uh, half a year ago, what are their future? Uh, they had this future, but uh, only now they started to protest against the government. And as I said, today they went first time to the Maidan, the big square, to say no to Kiev oligarch government, to say no to oligarch uh, future of Ukraine. Uh, very important aspect to uh, mention Christina Martinez, who said about uh, United States imperialism and occupation of Iraq, Afghanistan, and now intentions to come to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and we are also very afraid that NATO can use military forces uh, and it can be provocation for the new global war and the provocation from NATO could lead to, to the uh, real terrible conflict from all mankind. So let's do all together all possible and impossible to prevent this aggression from NATO and we will do the same to prevent aggression from Russia. Uh, as far as uh, modern Russia is concerned, we have anti-oligarchic, anti-bureaucratic forces, we have critique of Putin regime, but now uh, it's one of the paradoxes. Putin became symbol of the anti-imperialist struggle and symbol of the, any form of um, uh, struggle against NATO. And in this situation we have much more contradictions and difficulties in this uh, struggle and in this action, but we are trying to do our best. And about future. Uh, again, uh, for us the best solution will be a real united Ukraine with a federal maybe confederation inside uh, with uh, two languages or three languages as state languages, as real, with real democracy and social orientation of development of economy and uh, so on. And uh, for this we must fight now, but uh, in the situation of military conflict I think we have to support first of all struggle of Donetsk people for their rights uh, against mass killing and we must condemn the uh, Ukrainian army, right sector and other professed forces for killing people and condemn the Kyiv government for this. Uh, now I think they are first of all responsible for the conflict. They must say, okay, if you want to be independent, you must be independent. We will recognize this, no war. Let's have what we have. That will be there. And then you will see. In Ukraine, in the center and the west of Ukraine, the life is fantastic. The life in your republic is terrible. So you will decide to join to Ukraine like uh, Crimea people decided to join to Russia. So let's do the same. Let's uh, invite people to be part of our country, not because we force them to do this, but because life in our country is better than in other countries. Only this situation can be unification. unification. So this is my opinion. And at the end, I want to say thank you very much, comrades, colleagues, friends. First of all, thank you very much to Karsten, to Olga, to everybody who organized this. This is from all of us. Uh, our meetings, uh, alternative.ru by at the end there are a lot of videos and other information fakes about real conflict 
and you can write directly me. It's very simple. Busgalen dot Busgalen at mail dot are you Carson can give you this email, and we are very glad to be in solidarity and we will help you to contact the next people, key people, Western Ukrainian people. And now maybe Carson will tell us you will. Thank you. Thank you very much.